Thank you, and, and welcome to this event. I'm pretty excited about celebrating Gladly We Give. This is a new event for our campus, and we're celebrating it as close as we can in conjunction with National Philanthropy Day. And you may not know that there's a National Philanthropy Day, but there is. And that is actually, if you want to circle it on your calendar for future reference, November 15th of each year. Today we have three, uh, three goals for our event. One is to celebrate Gladly We Give and all the successes of that. Second, truly to publicly thank and say thank you in a very visible way to our 1,467 donors in FY09. And third, we want to recognize some very special donors and units who in their own way kind of went over the top. And so we want to celebrate them. Um, so we're excited about this. This will be an annual fund. We're hoping to, to grow it. And the real goal is for everyone to celebrate their passion. When you work at Illinois State University, you come to know the university through whatever lens it is where you're working. And some of us have worked in lots of different parts of the university. And we get things that we care very deeply about. And so we feel through this fund that it's very, very important that employees get to support their passion, whatever it is. We're trying really hard to make that possible. I want to thank some people, some campus administrators who've been very, very helpful with this. Of course, first of all, President Bowman. My longtime colleague, Vice President Steve Adams. I also want to recognize my newest colleague, Vice President Dan Lazell. And even though she's not able to be with us this afternoon, um, she, her new card's out, over. She's been here over a year, our provost, uh, Sherry Everts. <laughs> the deans, of course, also on the academic side of the house are very important to leading Gladly We Give and all our fundraising efforts. So many of them have put a lot also into that external outreach that we do for fundraising. So with the deans who are here this afternoon, I'll stand up and let us recognize you. And of course, I have to uh, recognize the important frontline staff. So would any university advancement staff who are in the room right now and not out working someplace else, stand up and let us recognize you as well. One of the great things about this kind of a gathering is everyone also gets a chance to get an update on the university and the well-being of the university. And so uh, let me introduce to you our 17th president and the keeper of our well-being, Al Bowman. Thank you, Diane. Thanks uh, to all of you for coming this afternoon. I apologize for bringing you in this room. Everyone was having such a good time out in the, uh, out in the hallway. Uh, I think we're all smiling because it's sunny for one of the few times this fall. We uh, had campus visits today from uh, prospective students. And I, as I walked by one group, I said, it's sunny all the time here. <laughs> kind of looked at me like, yeah, right. I said, I'm an Illinois public official. I don't have to tell the truth. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Following our first ever comprehensive fundraising campaign, Redefining Normal, I knew that we had to find the right person to keep the philanthropic momentum churning at Illinois State, and we found the right person, Diane Ashby. Each year since the campaign ended, Dr. Ashby and her staff have brought in millions of dollars in new gifts, and in the fiscal year that ended this past June, that number reached $10 million. And in the midst of a recession, that is pretty remarkable. This year, we are on pace to break that record, uh, and that's a remarkable achievement. And I want to congratulate you and salute you for what you've done, not only in this in this position, but throughout your years of service to Illinois State. Would you stand and be recognized? I tried to talk her out of retiring, and I, I didn't quite uh, accomplish that. But I knew I was in trouble when I saw the vanity plates on her car. They said, golf. I thought, this is a lost cause. <laughs> 
We also knew that we'd have to keep the positive energy flowing from our own family of donors, the faculty, staff, and of course retirees of Illinois State. And I'd like to salute Barb Todd for the good work that she's doing as director of our internal campaigns. Barb, she's standing in the back. And you've seen the PowerPoint uh, flash by that there has been a 25% increase in family campaign participation. So Barb, you've done a wonderful job. The men's basketball team stumbles this year. We'll bring you in as a consultant. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna need you though. They, they looked pretty good last night. I'd also like to thank our Gladly We Give ambassadors and everyone who has volunteered lots of time and energy to make the family campaign successful. Loyalty, commitment, and plain hard work make internal initiatives strong, and your efforts have brought successes we could not have imagined in years past. Every year, Illinois State University receives thousands of gifts from corporations, foundations, alumni, friends, and a variety of university stakeholders. But in my mind and in my heart, the gifts you give to Illinois State hold a unique place. It speaks volumes when the university's own faculty and staff and retirees not only give their time and talent to the institution, but also make it a financial priority for their charitable giving. Your gifts allow us to fund more than now 600 student scholarships, allows us to improve technologies and enhance our facilities. The latest example is last month's dedication of the new child care center that will serve the children of Illinois State faculty and staff. Your gifts reach out to the greater community by allowing us to broadcast quality radio programming and by bringing the campus uh, bringing to campus world-renowned speakers and top-flight cultural entertainment. I don't know if Robin Williams fits into that <laughs> category, but don't take your children. That would be my recommendation. <laughs> your contributions also enhance our athletic programs and help increase the visibility of the institution to our external stakeholders. Today, despite the most challenging economy in our memory, Illinois State has risen to its highest prominence in many years. Our students are more academically talented, our faculty and staff more engaged and nationally recognized, and our physical and collegial environment is more welcoming than ever. And Dr. Freed knows that as well as anyone who lived through the turbulent 90s. That kind of external success simply doesn't happen unless the internal community is strong, cohesive, and resilient. I'm proud to say that we have that atmosphere at Illinois State, and I'm very grateful that through your service and through your gifts, it's an atmosphere that each of you has helped create. Thank you very much. Regardless of where we choose to place our gifts, ultimately all of our gifts are about the ultimate passion at Illinois State University, and that is our students. And one of the things we've come to appreciate over the years is the stories of our students, because those are the stories of Illinois State University. And we've invited one of our students to tell her story today. Elsa Krishnaswamy is a master's degree student in biological sciences, and she is also the recipient of the Dr. Judy Smithson Graduate Scholarship. Elsa? Good evening. It's an honor to be here today. <laughs> I'm going to just say that. In the spring of 2009, I received the Dr. Judy Smithson Graduate Scholarship. It was a great honor. One preferred criteria for receiving the scholarship was being a member of the Coalition of Citizens with Disabilities of Central Illinois, of which I am a lifetime member. The Coalition advocates for people with disabilities. It helps inform businesses of how to accommodate disabled people, and it helps individuals with disability-related issues and other concerns in the community. Receiving this scholarship was also a way of bringing some awareness of this organization to others. The scholarship meant much more than the monetary benefits that I received. It has had a profound impact in my life. 
I have a physical disability from a muscle disorder. Every day is a challenge, but it is also a blessing. It limits everything that I do, as my energy for everyday tasks is compromised and limited. It even, it even limits learning and retaining information. Basically, the energy cycle in my body is lacking certain proteins it needs. Taking an exam takes me at least three days to recover, and it makes me physically sick. As my brain takes energy from the rest of my body to use it for the cognitive work it takes to prepare for and complete my exam. My condition can change from one day to the next, but I am lucky and blessed to be able to function like a healthy person at times, even though I never feel quite well. I graduated from ISU with a bachelor's degree in biology in the spring of 2004, after first starting my education in 1992. I immediately began my master's degree in biology that summer, along with a graduate research assistantship. My son was born in September of that year. My condition declined, and I stopped going to school in December of 2004. I was hospitalized in March 2005 and began my master's again in the spring of 2006. I was again hospitalized in February 2008 due to a respiratory stress test that I took. This time I was bedbound for four months. I came back to school in the spring of 2009 and hope to be able <clears throat> to complete my degree and will continue to move forward. I love school. It is my passion. It is tough on me. Getting a full-time job would be way easier. But isn't anything worth accomplishing, worth fighting for? <clears throat> so what did the scholarship mean to me? It meant the world to me. It meant that I can get a scholarship that takes my abilities into consideration because I am working to the best of my ability. It meant that all of my hard work, my husband, and my son's sacrifices are worth it. It is also a tribute to my parents that, sac <coughs> that sacrificed bringing eight children to this country from Mexico when I was four to work in the farm fields with them picking onions, chilies, corn, and pecans. It picks me up on days when I ask myself, can I do this? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to remind myself that I am doing this, and I am accomplishing my goals. It might just take me a little longer than everyone else. I am also very grateful for the minority tuition waivers which are awarded based on merit to help pay for my graduate education. And they also help provide me with a sense of accomplishment. With God and my family's support, anything is possible. Elsa, thank you. You're in a room full of loving, caring people, and, and you can't know how much that meant to everyone here to hear your story, and thank you for your bravery and your passion for sharing that. And know that we all wish you well on your studies and on, and on your life. And we can't wait to see what you're going to be when you grow up. <laughs> we have several other recognitions this afternoon, and we're going to start with recognizing consecutive year donors to Illinois State University. And this is an opportunity for us to thank our longtime donors. And originally, we had the scheme that we would do certificates for consecutive 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years. And then we got to counting up how many people that would be. You'd never get that cocktail. We'd be here a long, long time. So. Um, and when we first counted that up, we thought, okay, at five-year increments, well, that would only be 410 people. 
And then that didn't include the 11, 13, 17 years, et cetera, you know, the other landmarks. So we thought, all right, we'll try to figure out something else. So to this afternoon, we're going to recognize some phenomenal individuals and couples who have given to Illinois State University for 25 consecutive years or more. And when you see how many people that is, it's absolutely phenomenal. This is truly a family that cares. Um, now, it may be that we don't know exactly how many people that is, unfortunately, because our electronic files only go back to 1984. So we had to use 25 as our benchmark. Yeah, Susan knows, I mean, they were on card files and everything else for the longest time. It was great we went electronic, but the truth is there are just some things we don't know. So we're going to do our best here. And President Bowman will join me to present their certificates, and I would invite the individuals and couples to come forward as I call your names. And we're trying to um, acknowledge those who are here, and then I will also try to acknowledge those who aren't. And if that has changed in any way, my apologies. So we're going to start with Joe and Nancy Armstrong. Alphabetical has its privileges. <laughs> Kenneth and Laura Burke. Jude Boyer. Roger and Elaine Cushman. Vicki and David Erickson. <laughs> love the red shirts. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you for that. Charles and Victoria Harris. Not my phone, just for the record. <laughs> Linda Herman. <laughs> Sheila Hufeld. <laughs> Susan and Steve Kern. Two retired. <laughs> I've never seen anyone. <laughs> and they've been all over the world, too. Linda and Ron Clawwitter. More red shirts. Loretta and Bill Labonte. Thank you. I'm so sorry she didn't get to come. Thank you so much. Clarence and Lila Moore. Carol Morton Schmidt and Don Schmidt. Jim and Jean Munns. Ferris and Harriet O'Daffer. Rhonda and Phil Queen. <laughs> David and Betty Rodemaker. <laughs> K 
Kathy Sheedwin. Kathy here. Okay. Kathy and Mark Sherman. Oops. Ralph and Ellen Smith. Ralph and Ellen Smith. Charlotte and Joe Talkington. Barbara and Rodney Todd. Tom and Kay Wilson. And Mark and Eva Wyman. Thank you, President Bowman. I'm going to read a long list of names, so if you want to have a seat for a minute, then I'm going to bring you back up here to help us with some more awards. Um, there are other individuals who have given for 25 years and couples, and I'm going to read their names. And if by chance you happen to be here and we didn't think you were coming, come up here and I'll ask President Bowman to get back up and uh, give you your certificate. So, some, some, but I think it's important to recognize them. Roger and M. Rebecca Anderson, Carolyn and Charles Bartlett, Marsha and Michael Blair, Charles and Maxine Bolin, Paul Borg, Peter and Margaret Couch, Gail and Galen Crow, Debbie and Don Cruz, Tim and Wendy Duffy, Harold and Marlene Greger, Pat and John Groves, Sandra and Paul Harmon, Jill Hutchinson, Claire and Tom LaMonica, Dixie Mills, Cal Prittner and Eva Marie Johnson, William Rao and Barbara Heil, I happen to know they've just come back from Thailand. Um, probably got a little jet lag. Earl and Carol Rattan. Michael and Nancy Schultz. Gary Simanko. John Shields. Ralph and Ellen Smith. Ray and Missy Smock. David and Trudy Strand. Robert Weigel. Rick and Gwyneth Whitaker. Peter Whitman. So if you would please help me, even though they're not here, let's give those folks a round of applause as well. Well, in this inaugural year of Gladly We Give, we raised more than $840,000 for our campus for a total per, uh, participation, participation percentage of 27.4%. And this was a over more than 25% increase in our family donors, so thank you, everyone. We also had a nice increase in payroll deduct don donors of 17%, and a great number of our faculty and staff donors give through payroll deduct, and that's a very nice way to do it. We want to thank everyone, but we want to honor a few special individuals and departments this afternoon. So President Bowman, if you would please. I don't get to tell my boss what to do very often. It's kind of fun. That's what happens. Farewell tour, what can I say? I've seen it before. <laughs> First of all, um, I want you to know that we engaged 33 colleagues across the campus to help tell our story as our ambassadors. And these ambassadors were very helpful in achieving our success, and this year we selected two individuals to receive the 2009 Ambas Ambassadors of the Year Award. Now clearly these two individuals went beyond the call of duty, and when you see who they are, it won't be unexpected. They met with every unit in their division. They scheduled all those presentations themselves, including all the rooms and equipment, made sure everything was okay, and they played an instrumental role in significant growth of donors in their division. And so I want to recognize from Student Affairs, Dave Mantlin and Danielle Miller-Schuster. Come on, up, come up here. I don't know what people told you to get you here, but thank you. And we really, really, really appreciate everything that you have done. <laughs> now, 
it, it, it perhaps is, is not an accident then that when we look to which unit had the highest increase in faculty staff participation, well, thanks to the great work of Dave and Danielle, that is the Division of Student Affairs, which achieved a 77% increase in the number of donors. So Vice President Adams, would you come forward please to accept an award? All they're doing. <laughs> he thought he was just coming because he had to. <laughs> Thank you, Vice President Adams. Um, we also are going to give a unit award for highest overall percentage of participation from faculty and staff. And this year, with a 98% participation, athletics. And Doug Banks will accept that award. That's pretty, pretty, pretty incredible. Something for everybody to strive for. We also are beginning a tradition of recognizing a department, school, unit for their overall philanthropy efforts. And selection criteria included evidence of giving by faculty, staff, and retirees, encouragement of others to give, and being a leader across the campus in philanthropy and volunteer support. And that department will receive a perpetual or traveling plaque that they can hang in their office for the year and then try to keep it. So this year, the first ever, the 2009 Philanthropy Department of the Year is the School of Biological Sciences. And Director Tak Chung will accept that award. Congratulate biology. The selection committee noticed that they had an increased faculty staff participation by 50% and they were successful in many areas having to do with philanthropy and with volunteerism, including annual events for retirees, colloquia and special events to honor both faculty and alumni, and weekly seminars featuring prominent alumni. So thank you for that wonderful example of how to do it. We're also going to present some individual Philanthropist of the Year awards. You know, I'm trying real hard to not screw that word up, but it's, I'm having trouble getting it out there. Philanthropist, try saying that fast. Okay. Criteria for individual Philanthropist of the Year awards uh, included evidence of support to the university, encouraging philanthropy from other current or retired employees, and volunteerism to help the university or foundation achieve success. The committee, even in its inaugural year, could not select just one. So we have two. So we're going to recognize both a current employee and a retiree. So the individual selected as the first philanthropist of the year has spent her entire career at Illinois State University, beginning as a graduate student. And during this long history, she has continuously given back professionally, personally, and monetarily. In addition to financially supporting many areas on campus, she has been known to help out students with tuition money, assist young faculty members, and donate much needed books. Last year, a college-wide award was named in her honor, and her colleagues and students created an endowment fund to serve as a lasting tribute to her generosity to others. So from the surprise box of chocolates for department staff to the discreet monetary contributions to many who may not know her as their benefactor, Dr. Jan Nylib of the English Department has served ISU generously and well. The Philanthropy of the Year Award goes to Jan Nylib. Jan, thank you, thank you, thank you. Illinois State University, thanks you. Our second award goes to a retired faculty member and his wife. The nomination states that the faculty member has had a, and continues to have a major impact on this institution as a brilliant scholar, excellent teacher, committed citizen, and generous benefactor. Their personal support to the university includes an endowed scholarship to his department, which presents a scholarship to a non-traditional student. In addition, a former student was encouraged by her faculty mentor and established an endowment in his honor. 
and wrote a letter of support for this nomination which stated, it is because of his dedication to students, their learning and well-being, that I established the scholarship. Our intent was to provide students in the history department with the same access to caring faculty that Dr. W Mark Wyman embodies. him to come this afternoon. We could, we could certainly share many specific examples of, of, of the Wyman's personal generous support beyond these and we know Dr. Wyman prefers instead to place the focus on his students. Thank you very, very much. There we go. Look at that. Wonderful. That's right. Future Redbird. Get that kid a t-shirt. Congratulations to everyone and thank you so much. Your university needs all of your talent and that you're willing to go beyond that and open your pocketbook means so much. And you all know where your passion makes a difference. Um, appreciate you also coming out to our first ever celebration. And there will be lots of opportunities for all of us to say this, but I think it's really important to keep in mind that it really is about the people. We have lots of wonderful facilities. Um, we have lots of wonderful programs, but it's all because of the people who, wherever they work at Illinois State University, know that it's about our students and also about the way we interact with each other. So thank you very much, and thank you for coming this afternoon, and have a great holiday season.